Hey, let me ask you something. Are you tired of facing opposition in your life? Do you constantly feel like those obstacles are blocking the path to your success? And will facing these challenges and facing this opposition really unlock the golden opportunities in your life? Stay tuned and let's harvest the answers in today's lesson. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you all, especially to my HTC family, my HTC peeps, and to all my brand new Revelation Reapers. Hey, I'm glad you're here today with us. Uh, we're starting this brand new sermon series from my latest book, Opposition Releases Opportunity. So listen, if you haven't done so, please make sure you go get your copy today at amazon.com forward slash author slash Kelvin Dunn. I'll make sure I put the description in, I um, mean, I'll put the link in the description. All right. Great. So let's get into lesson one of our new sermon series, Opposition Releases Opportunity. All right. So Y'all know like how I like to do. I always like to start our sermon series with a series definition and give you the series uh, scripture foundation. All right. So uh, for this series definition, uh, opposition releases opportunity. It simply means it conveys the outcoming challenge. I mean, excuse me. It conveys that overcoming challenges it opens the door to positive outcomes and new possibilities pastor k that's a mouthful can you shorten that for me so i can put that in my notes sure let's do it like this very simple opposition releases opportunity simply means or is defined like this overcome challenges unlock possibilities put that in your notes overcome challenges unlock possibilities right and so our foundational scripture uh is also going to be our scripture text for our lesson today it's coming from first corinthians chapter 16 verses 8 and 9 and i'm reading this from the new life version all right this is the apostle paul and he's writing his letter to the church uh at ephesus and paul says this he says but i will stay in ephesus until pentecost because a door of great opportunity stands wide open for me but there are many opponents or one translation says many adversaries now uh shannon l alder she wrote and said or he i don't know which if, which it may be but they wrote this and said uh i quote you will face your greatest opposition when you are closest to your biggest miracle wow how many of you have experienced this that you face a great opposition and you don't know why it's coming up against you you don't know why it's happening to you you ready to throw in the towel you ready to quit you ready to throw your hands up cuss somebody out but when you're facing your greatest opposition you are that much closer to your biggest miracle and even today i know right now somebody's watching this somebody's listening and somebody somewhere is facing opposition and that's what i want to talk to you about today uh today is uh lesson one in our sermon series opposition releases opportunity and i want to talk from the subject facing opposition so if you live life long enough, I know some of us uh, just started living. Some of us uh, have been around for a few decades. All right? I'm, I'm one of those. I've been around uh, almost five decades, I think it is. 
I'll be 50 come April. So if you live long enough, you're going to face some opposition. You will experience uh, some type of uh, resistance, some level of resistance uh, that you didn't know was possible. Did you even know it could even happen? But the key is to stay focused and to keep moving forward. Otherwise, you risk becoming sidetracked and distracted. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to get you unfocused off of what God said you, you are, who you are. Uh, he wants to get you distracted and unfocused and sidetracked that God ain't going to show up. God doesn't care. God ain't worrying about you. Yes, he is. You're his creation. He created you in his image, in his likeness. You're like one of his trophies that he wants to display to the world and say, look, they have gone to hell and back. They faced all kind of opposition. But look at the opportunities that have prevailed. Look at the success that I have made possible in their lives. He's just shining it, shining it up shining you up and putting you on display to the world to show the world that if this person can go from this and call on me accept me and allow me to step in and fight some of the battles they can go from this to that so let's talk about opposition and, and let's get a clear and simple understanding uh, and definition about what opposition is. It is simply this. It is disagreeing with something or someone often by speaking or fighting against it. Now, when we say fighting against opposition, I ain't talking about like a fist battle or like a physical fist fight. No, we're talking about like uh, the civil rights movement. We're talking about uh, standing up and speaking out against something that uh, may not necessarily be right. Uh, it, it's a disagreement somewhere where uh, you're like, hey, this doesn't benefit everybody and, and it ain't. Uh, it ain't working out, you know, so sometimes we'll stand up and, and face that opposition and we speak out and what is released from speaking out and fighting against it is opportunities. There's the opportunities. And I know we say the cliche opportunity knocks, but really it's not the opposition that's knock. I mean, it's not the opportunities that's knocking. It's the opposition that wants to fight. See, the opposition wants to see if you want to fight. And sometimes we don't want to fight. We see the opposition <clears throat> and we see the opportunity and we like, you know what, man, nah, it ain't worth it. I don't it. I want But then when you see somebody else go through, face that opposition, and come out on top with the opportunity, then you want to talk about them. Come on, somebody. So is opposition a bad thing, Pastor K? Well, opposition is challenging uh, since it's, it's a meeting of two opposing forces. See, uh, it is less tense and provoking than the square aspect. In other words, opposition is not a bad aspect but we have defined it and we have uh made it to be as it's something bad it's not bad and this whole notion it requires big time updates we we got to really understand opposition when we face opposition it's not bad when you face an opponent it's not bad for you that love sports the Super Bowl is getting ready to happen. You have the 49ers of San Francisco who will be opponents or opposing against the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, is that bad? No. Now, for those who, you know, they are dead diehard fans, you know, 
y'all know how y'all get when when your favorite team gets to the Super Bowl or gets to the playoffs or better yet y'all know how y'all be when somebody's team doesn't make it to the playoffs or the Super Bowl I ain't gonna say no names all right but y'all know how it is but see opposition is not bad but we've made it and defined it as something bad now if you ask me if there is anybody uh biblically that i can walk through the scripture with uh when it comes to facing opposition and that exemplifies this to the the greatest human aspect it would be paul uh who was formerly known as saul uh, Paul, the tenacious tent maker who was born and came from the city of Tarsus. Now, listen, this cold blooded brother was born a Roman citizen, yet he was beaten with a Roman rod. Now, this wasn't supposed to happen, but Paul who was preaching and spreading the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, he endured three Roman beatings with a rod. Now that's, that's something that's bad that you, you would think, man, that's some, that's some serious opposition. Now nah, it didn't stop there. Paul received 195 lashes, meaning he was whipped 195 times not only did he uh go through that and was beaten three times with a roman rod but paul was also stoned left for dead and he was dragged outside of the city of lystra uh this dude had been shipwrecked three times he was been submerged in the open sea for a night and a day he was bitten by a venomous viper snake and he lived to tell the tale and write about it in the gospels. Paul faced multiple challenges and various opposition throughout his life, traveling year in, year out, crossing over rivers and oceans during great hurricanes and storms. He was fending off robbers and 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 struggling uh with who was his friend and who was his foe paul had to face the opposition of who's my friend and who's my enemies I, 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 is anybody out there am i talking to somebody are you experiencing that in your own life that you grew up with some folks you've been running with folks uh for your childhood and high school and some of your college days and now you don't really know if they're really your friend or if they're now your enemy see paul went on and paul know what it's like to miss meals paul missed some meals uh he was endangered by the desert sun paul had even been left out and stripped and walked around in various weather conditions naked and he also encountered cold weather uh he was exposed to various illnesses and diseases that afflicted his body paul understands opposition releases opportunity and paul yet remained strong and focused not on the opposition at hand but rather he focused on the opportunity despite all the opposition he endured paul recognized that opposition is not as bad as long as it does not derail your focus on what God has called you to accomplish. Our foundational scripture uh, and our lesson scripture today, I want to focus in on 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. Uh, it says, A door of great opportunity stands wide open for me. There is a door of opportunity that is wide open for you. I right? listen, we are 
in the Hebrew year 5784. We're in the uh, Roman Greco calendar year of 2024. The number four in Hebrew means open door. God has set an open door and it's a, this is the year to embrace the open door. All right. And so, uh, Paul says, and he writes that there is a wide open door for me, but there are many opponents. There are many adversaries here, but Paul says, listen, I ain't worrying about it. The adversaries, I ain't a worrying about who's opposing the gospel. I just see this great opportunity. This is why I got to stay here in Ephesus. I got to get and get to doing what God has called me to do. Paul demonstrates in our series foundation scripture that he views opposition to the gospel as part of the evidence that it's effective. It works. It, the, the proof is in the pudding. His instinct is not to run, but to double down on his ministry when things start to heat up, when the opposition starts to come and at him, when those many opponents start to challenge him. Why? Put this in your notes. Because opposition fuels effectiveness. If you want to know how effective you are in doing something. How effective are you uh, in doing your job? How effective are you, uh, uh, you know, fighting and speaking out against something? Just look around and look at the opposition that's coming against you. If the opposition is not great, your effectiveness is not great. Did y'all hear that? Put that in your notes. Opposition fuels effectiveness. And if I want to know how effective I am spreading the gospel, how many demons and devils am I stirring up that is opposing and trying to keep me from doing and saying what God wants me to say and do? How many demons and devils is up on my job giving me all kind of hell and trying to keep me from the promotion that God says is mine, trying to hold me back from what God says I already got. Oh man, are y'all with me today? When facing opposition, I got three points I wanna talk about and then I'm gonna get up out your way, all right? So when we're facing opposition, uh, the three points that we need to learn and make applicable i've always said this i'm always continue to say this uh y'all remember the cartoon gi joe gi joe the slogan was gi joe a real american hero and then he would say uh knowing is half the battle man i used to get excited when they would say that you know gi joe and then he say a real American hero. And they go through the song and then at the end it said, and knowing is half the battle. Man, that was awesome. That's a very profound statement, but it is a half of a statement because the more that you know, yeah, that's half the battle. What's the other half? Nobody ever questioned what's the other half. The other half is applying or application, applying that knowledge that you now know. That's half the battle. The other half is now you got to apply it in order to win the battle. You can't win the battle with just having a strategy. Oh, come on now. You can have a plan all day long, but if you don't put that plan into action, you just got a plan. So you just got knowledge. You just have half the battle. You got half the battle won because you got this awesome strategic plan to put into place, but you never put it into place. Why? Because you don't want to face the opposition. <laughs> you, you don't want to face the opposition to release the opportunity that's awaiting on the other side. 
Listen, I got three points and I got to get out of here. Point number one is this. Embrace the challenge. I'll put this in your notes. Point number two, overcome the obstacles. Point number three, you have to seize the opportunity. Now, throughout this series, you're going to hear probably some of these same points reiterated in other lessons. All right. So don't be alarmed. Don't be surprised. Don't be thinking out. I lost my mind and I ain't got nothing to talk about. No repetition is good because it's, it's got to sink in. I'm trying to plant these seeds so that you will have the knowledge and then that knowledge, you will water it and watch it transform your life into application and you begin to apply it and see the fruits and see the results of it. All right. So point number one is embrace the challenge or in other words, put this in your notes, see challenges as chances for growth. You got to see the challenge, not as something bad, not as, uh, not again, uh, I got to do this and oh, uh, I got to go through that. Oh, I got to deal with this one and I got to deal with that one. And I got to deal with this, that, and the other. Stop looking at it negatively. You got to see it positively as a chance for you to grow something in your life needs to grow. You got to grow up. I don't know who I'm talking to, but this is your year to grow up. This is your year to mature in the spiritual things and in also in the, the, the physical or in your emotions, uh, in every aspect of your life. This is your time and season for you to grow up. Yeah, life hurts. I know I've experienced it. I've experienced some stuff in life and yes, life hurts. But you have to make the decision. You have to make the choice and you have to choose to push past the pain to become more than just a survivor or become more than just a conqueror. Instead, you got to push past that pain. You got to grow up and you got to become an overcomer. Uh huh. See, to survive is to just make it through or just make it by uh, for those of you who have survived and now you're at that level of conquering something you can't stop at that level you can't stop uh with that opposition because see to conquer is to just is just surviving i'm just growing and becoming better ah this is my year and this is my time this is my season that i will become more than a survivor more than a conqueror i will become an overcomer what's an overcomer an overcomer is a person who is surviving growing becoming better stronger and wiser is that you? I know that's you. Listen, put this in your notes. You got to focus on the opportunity rather than the opposition. So I got to see the challenge as a chance for growth. And then I need to focus on that opportunity rather than putting my time, energy and effort into uh focusing on the opposition yeah let me parenthetically digress here for a moment see listen uh to focus on the opportunity and not focus on the opposition this is what you got to do see uh I, I, uh, uh let me see how i want to see it let me say it like this we tend to focus more on the difficulties and focus on the problems rather than the opportunities and the solutions. Mm -hmm. That's what we do when the opportunity, see, see when the opportunity presents itself and opposition jumps in front of it and is knocking to see, uh, like Goliath. Oh my God. Yeah. It was like, it's like Goliath. Y'all remember the story of David and Goliath? Uh-huh. Goliath was this, uh, humongous giant Philistine 
uh, and, and, and the Philistine army, they was like, this is our fighting champion. And so they, every day they come to the, the camp of Israel and, 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 and oppose them and say, listen, who y'all got to battle today? Who, who y'all got to face our champion giant? Who, who gonna step up to the plate? And Israel didn't have nobody at the moment. Everybody that went up against this Philistine uh, got slaughtered, got cut down, got beat up, got thrown to the side. Till one day, this little teenage boy who was his, who was, uh, who, who was a shepherd tending to his father's sheep was out in the field one day with a slingshot. Didn't have a sword, didn't have a gun, didn't have a spear. Didn't have none of that. Had a, had a slingshot. Y'all remember them days, right? Had a slingshot was out tending the sheep and, 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 a, and a lion came out to try to take one of the sheep and David went out there and, and, and slew the lion. This little teenage boy said, man, look here. I got God on my side. I got God backing me. Man, ain't nothing I can't do without, without God on my side. The man, listen, he took out a lion. And then David heard the call. He was tending the sheep and David heard the call. He heard the Philistines call out who y'all got today that will oppose our champion. Who do you got that'll step up to the plate and fight our champion today? And David heard the call. David went running. David said, man, listen, I done killed this lion. I done killed some, some other animals that's been trying to eat my daddy's sheep. Uh, man, look here, this dude, this cat, man, this ain't nothing. David said, hold on. I I'll be right back. He went to the pond. He found them five smooth stones, put them in his bag, grabbed his, his slingshot. And he went to war. He said, man, listen, he, he went to the king. He said, put me in, put me in the, in the ring with him. I take him out. Everybody looking, boy, you're a little teenager. <laughs> See, this is why you can't despise the days of small beginnings. You can't be laughing at the little stuff. But see, it's the little things that God will use. It's the little stuff that you need to pay attention to. See, it's though they looked at David as, as that boy, what can you do? What, what, what you got that we ain't got here? We got swords, we got helmets, we got shields. Yeah, but David said, but y'all ain't got God on your side. You ain't got God with you. You ain't got God backing you. He was backing me. He had my back when I took out that lion. He had my back when I took out that bear. He had my back. And he still got my back. And he got my back right now. And I'm going to take out this Philistine. He said, matter of fact, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take him out. And with his own sword, I'm going to chop his head off. And I'm going to parade it throughout the city. How about that? And you know what? David reached in his bag, grabbed one of those stones, loaded up his slingshot, and he got to whirling. And he got to whirling. And he, he, he sat there, he was like, listen, in the name of Jesus, you uncircumcised Philistine giant, you going down today. I'm just paraphrasing the scripture for you. David released it. That rock hit Goliath square dead between the eyes. And with the force, with the angle, and with the, the projectile that God used, the precise timing and everything, and the power that God put on that rock, hit that giant square dead between his eyes. Man, it gave him a concussion, knocked him square out, and he went straight down. And David took off running, took, it, took the sword of Goliath out of his sleeve, and slit his head, cut his head off, plopped down in that, that, that sword, plopped it on his sword, held it up high. Man, don't you know them Philistine, that Philistine army was like, what just happened? Yeah, David faced the opposition. And what was the opportunity that awaited David? Well, the opportunity was to join 
the is the israelite army and on top of that saul's daughter saul said if there's anybody that can take this giant out you have my wife you can have my daughter excuse me you have my daughter's hand in marriage david was a teenager he was probably somewhere around maybe 17 18 16 something like that and he done went out here and and did something that these grown men didn't even want to do because for so long they had been scared of this giant but see we put more time energy and effort into facing continual despair and staying stuck in a dead-end job with a boss who's always on your case for doing an excellent job and and you focus more on remaining stuck in that abusive relationship feeling afraid to leave or even tell somebody or maybe just maybe you're over anxious and and made your problems and difficulties and obstacles bigger than they really are before they even happened because you become distracted and you lost focus of the opportunity. David did not lose his focus. David did not become distracted by the fact uh, the, the, the winning and losing record that the Israelite army had against the Philistine army and Goliath. He didn't focus and he didn't look at that. David saw the opportunity that if God can use me to watch over my father's sheep and to spare each sheep when the time came and they was under attack and I faced the opponent of a lion and I faced the opponent of a bear and I faced the opponent of this, that, and the other. If God can bring me out of that as triumphant, what more can he do in this situation? Because David saw that facing opposition releases opportunity. And it released the opportunity because David, later on in his childhood, was anointed to be the next king of Israel. So whatever it is that you're, you're facing today, whatever it is you face right now, I need you to know and remember this. It is not as bad as it seems. Use the seasons of opposition as opportunities to become stronger. Use these moments, use these opponents to be more resolved, to become more determined, to see it through because opposition releases opportunity and you need to embrace the positive outlook and re and refrain reframe the difficulties into resilience and strength in other words put this in your notes you need to learn to ch turn challenges into strength embrace positivity see that's what happens when we face opposition and we lose focus of the opportunity, we, we embrace the negativity of what we can't do, how we can't do it, how we don't have enough to do it with, and all of that. You got to turn those challenges into strength and embrace positivity. Consider a, diff a difficult situation that you may be in right now. Like, uh, like having a lot of work you got to get done on your job. Instead of feeling overwhelmed about all the work, you decide to have a positive rather than negative attitude today. And you see the challenges as a chance to show the boss your strength and your resilience. And instead of seeing problems as things that stop you, you begin to approach and you begin, uh, uh, you approach them and you begin thinking, I can get through this and it'll make me even that much better and stronger. In other words, uh, let me put some scripture on it for you. I can do 
everything through Christ who gives me the strength. According to Philippians chapter four, verse 13, after embracing and reframing these challenges, you become stronger, more resolved and more determined by cultivating a mindset of perseverance. Uh huh. You got to change your thinking from negative to positive. You got to change your thinking from uh, focusing on the opposition and focus on the opportunity. Point number two is overcome obstacles. Put this in your notes. Rise strong, adjust and overcome challenges. You got to rise up, become strong. Where's your strength? It ain't in your ability. It's not in your talent. It's not in your gifts. No, your strength comes from the Lord. Your strength comes from Jehovah God. So you got to tap into that strength. You got to rise strong, make the adjustment where necessary. Uh-huh. That's what that's that's where those strategies come in at. That's where that game plan comes in at. Oh man, you tired of being broke? Well, you need to see where is your money going. You need to sit down and start budgeting. You need to sit down and put a financial plan together so that you can overcome those challenges. You develop strength and success despite facing challenges. And you don't just survive difficulties by flourish. Uh, you don't just survive the difficulties, but rather you flourish and grow stronger in the face of opposition. Well, what do you mean? What are you saying, Pastor K? I'm saying this, that when you're faced with the criticism, uh, instead of feeling defeated, you build tenacity by staying focused on your goals. You learn from the feedback and you use it to improve. Mm -hmm. See, there's some things that's going on in your life and, and you trying to figure out what's going on and, and, and somebody has given you a little criticism and you've taken it personal and, and you, man, you know, you done got this attitude. You done got all worked up, been out of shape, but they gave you positive criticism. And so instead of feeling like you're defeated or letting it defeat you, you got to build some tenacity. You got to get focused and you need to zone in on those goals. You need to make those improvements. What I tell you earlier, it's time for some of us to start growing up in some areas. You need to put this in your notes, seek guidance and strength from God. See, when we seek guidance and strength from God, uh, in finding this strength and guidance, it, it comforts and it empowers us through a relationship with God during the times of adversity. See, when dealing with uh, that personal crisis that you got going on in your life, uh, when dealing with it, you, rather than turning to something or someone other than God, you need to turn to prayer and seek strength from your faith. Find comfort and guidance to navigate through those challenging times. And while you're doing that, utilize your gifts and talents to overcome the challenges. Uh, this, put that in your notes, utilize gifts and talents to overcome challenges. See, this statement reflects a belief in finding guidance, comfort, and empowerment through a relationship with God during times of adversity. See, uh, you may be, you may have a difficult project and, and you leverage and you leverage your creativity and problem solving skills rather than focusing on everything and everybody else you need to zone in and hone in and use to your advantage uh your problem solving skills your unique talent uh to find innovative solutions 
and overcome obstacles efficiently. In other words, put this in your notes. You got to learn how to break through without breaking down. Man, who am I talking to today? Did y'all hear me? You got to start. You got to find a way to break through without breaking down. Point number three, we've, we got to learn and we have to apply how to seize these opportunities. Put this in your notes, bold steps to boundless opportunities. We got to make some bold steps in order to reach the boundless, meaning opportunities that don't have any bounds opportunities that are just, uh, they're just great. There's so many. See, when we take those bold steps, even in facing, uh, uncertainties and challenges, it opens the door to endless opportunities for growth, success, and fulfillment. In other words, embracing something new, although uncertain and taking a bold step, it leads to boldness opportunities for growth. In other words, put this in your notes, it unleash growth and we step beyond our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Unleash growth and step beyond the comfort zone. See, this emphasizes the idea that true growth often happens when individuals are willing to take risks, face discomfort and explore new possibilities. Let me give you an example. Uh, it reminds me y'all, y'all remember the great Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali says, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. He was one of the baddest, not just in the ring, but outside the ring as well. He was one, he was one of the greatest of his time. One of the greatest of this boxing era. And Muhammad Ali, Watch this. Muhammad Ali, he, he, he understood and he, he put into a technique, a way to unleash his growth. And he stepped out of his comfort zone. See, while everybody else was kind of boxing in the same way, he took it to a whole nother level. He took this thing to a whole nother level. See, uh, he was willing to take a risk. He faced his discomfort and he explored a whole new possibility. What are you saying? What do you mean, Pastor K? He invented the boxing technique that we now know and call the rope-a-dope. Y'all remember that? Mm-hmm, the rope-a-dope. See, the rope-a-dope, it was made famous by Muhammad Ali and this particular fighting style it was simply a bait and switch. I bait you in and then when I'm ready, I make the switch. Watch this. Ali would pretend to be weakened and affected by his opponents punching on him while tiring themselves out. That was the bait. He baited, he would get on the ropes and he would guard himself. But while he was guarding himself from the punches, he was taking those punches, but at the same time, what the opponent didn't understand was every punch that they threw, every time that they would hit Muhammad Ali, it would drain and exhaust them more. And that when the time came, he performed the rope-a-dope or the bait and switch. He baited them in, and when he felt like they was right at their weakest point, he would switch and flip it around and put them on the ropes and she started going after them and they can't really defend themselves because they done exhausted all this energy and effort trying to get him 
to, to knock out and go down. So he pretended to be weakened and affected by his opponent's punch while, tire, while they was tiring themselves out. And this gave Muhammad Ali the opportunity to execute devastating offensive punches that would help him win the fight. The rope dope he embraced discomfort. And that's what we have to do. Embracing discomfort becomes a path to development and unleashing potential. Put this in your notes. Embrace discomfort, unlock potential. That's what he did. He embraced the discomfort of taking those punches. And when the time came, he unlocked his potential and knocked out his opponent. You got to learn that uh, there's some there's some opposition that somebody's facing. The Lord said you need to you need to do the rope a dope. You, you need to put your enemy on the ropes. You need to put yourself on the ropes, and you need to just rest, save your energy because I'm getting ready to tell you I'm finna strategically point to the weak spot and tell you how to lay the enemy out. Embrace discomfort, unlock potential. Put this in your notes also. Divine trust, guided abundance. This phrase encapsulates the idea of relying on faith and trusting in a higher power for support and direction and ultimately leading to a life filled with blessings and abundance let me close this lesson out with this let us not be disheartened by the opposition that we are encountering in our life today but instead i want you to view the challenges as opportunities for growth transformation and the manifestation of god's purpose in your life just as the apostle Paul, that tenacious tent maker from Tarsus, that cold blooded brother from Rome, embraced the open door of opportunity, despite facing the opposition and the many opponents, may we too have the courage, the strength, and the strategic mindset to step forward and seize the golden opportunities that lie before us right now. Listen, the growth principle for today's lesson is this. The victory is on the other side of the battle. The opportunity is on the other side of the opposition. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for the wisdom and the guidance in your word today. We thank you that opposition releases opportunity. And as we go throughout our day and we go throughout our life and as we face opposition, help us to remember that you're with us. You got our back every step of the way. Grant us the strength to embrace these challenges and turn each and every opposition into opportunities for both growth and transformation in our lives. May your Holy Spirit empower us to trust your sovereignty and walk confidently in the path you have set before us. This we ask and pray. In the mighty and matchless name of your son, Yahshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, we pray and say, Amen, Amen, and Amen again. It is signed, sealed, and delivered in Jesus' name. Thanks for joining us on the Harvest Broadcast today. We pray this message has awakened your soul, ignited your faith, and encouraged you to embrace the journey ahead. Now if you are new to the channel, 
let me encourage you to subscribe so you don't miss the upcoming lessons and your chance to comment. Want to learn more about Harvest Temple Church of Restoration, please visit our website at www.christrestored.org. And if you're ready to receive Christ into your life or would like more information about salvation, please visit the website and click the Salvation tab. Now on behalf of our servant leaders, Pastor Kelvin, Lady Zania, and the entire HTC Restoration family, peace and blessings be upon you until the next harvest time.